In this video, I thought it might be kind of cool to take a look at a different kind of pump. This is actually an e-pump. It's by Airmoto, and we're going to do a product review on it right now. Hello, my friends. My name is Gene Arnold, and thanks so much for tuning into this video. Once again, we'll be taking a look at a cool different type of pump. This is actually an e-pump, an electric pump, by a company called Airmoto. Let's take a look at how it works, take a look at some of the specs. I'll tell you what, what works well, what doesn't work so well, and um, maybe you can give me your thoughts on a product like this as well. Now, if content like this is interesting to you, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, maybe even give this video a thumbs up. So let's unbox this pump. The first thing you find is the manual with some instructions on how to use the features of the Airmoto Smart Pump. Next up, the pump itself. The pump has a display screen that's covered with a protective film for shipping, so you'll want to remove that before you get started. Taking a quick look around, you've got the, the main display, right? You've got a small button on the side to adjust pressure. You've got your primary button controls. On the top, you have access to the hose that you would use to connect this pump to whatever item you're trying to inflate. So am I the only person that thinks this little pump looks like a cell phone from the 1980s? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just me. Also on the top, you'll find a USB-C charging port with a small LED light that'll help you work in the dark. The last few items left in the box are some accessories to help you inflate different items and a storage bag to put everything in. The display can be a bit hard to read in direct sunlight, but let me explain how this pump works. You hold down the center button for a moment to power on the pump. You pick a unit of measure that you wish to use. I used PSI and then you cycle through the air pressure presets. We'll get into more details on that particular area later. Pretty easy to use, right? Then you just attach it to whatever you want to inflate, hit the center button again to start the pump, and it goes to town. For my first test, I tried to fill up a flat on a car. I turned on the pump and attached it to the tire that did have at least a little air in it. And what the pump did right away was it displayed how much air was actually in the tire at that time. That is really a pretty cool feature. I mentioned earlier you have five presets that you can store in this pump. Uh, there are the car, motorcycle, bike, basketball, and also personal settings. I had my car pressure set to 35 psi and then I started to inflate the tire. To be completely honest, the pump had a pretty hard time filling up this tire from flat. In the end, the battery died before the tire reached the set pressure. This is partly my fault because I should have made sure the pump was completely charged before I started filling up a tire from flat. The power indicator on the pump did show that it was fully charged, but I guess I should have topped off the battery before I started. This pump would be great for topping off your tires when they're a few PSI low, or to keep in your car for an emergency. As a primary pump for car tires, that's going to be a stretch. Now for me, that's actually totally fine because I wanted to use this pump for bike tires. So let's go take a look at that now. The first thing I did was attach the pump to my currently inflated tire to get the current pressure. Again, this pump does a great job letting you know how much air is in the item that you're connected to. I then double checked the pressure that this tire needed to be inflated to. So I set my bike preset on the pump to that same pressure. Followed that up by completely deflating the tire so that the pump would have to work with a flat tire. This would give me a good idea of what it would be like on the trails if I had to put a new tube in a tire that had a flat. This worked out great. My tire was filled in just over 2 minutes and 30 seconds. A great feature of this pump is the auto shutoff. Once the pump reaches its set pressure, it will stop inflating. This allows you to walk away if you need to, or at least not have to monitor the process so closely. Now for another test, I tried a bike tire with a Presta valve rather than the previous Schrader valve. In the accessory bag comes a small adapter to put on the end of the inflation hose. 
This will allow you to use the pump on a Presta valve. After adjusting the pressure on the pump to 18 PSI, I connected the pump and started inflating the tire. I do apologize, but I forgot to put my stopwatch on for this example. The inflation took around three minutes to finish. All right, so let's just do a quick recap. So here's the deal. This pump will have a bit of a challenge inflating completely flat tires and or very large truck tires. It would work just fine to top off low pressure tires and certainly it's good to keep in your car for emergencies. For a bike and sporting equipment pump, this little guy is great. I really like how the display will show you the current pressure in the item that you've connected it to. I also really like the presets and I definitely like the auto uh, shutdown functionality. Finally, the storage bag is a nice touch for keeping the pump safe and holding all the accessories. All right, my friends, let's wrap this video up. Once again, this is the Airmoto electric pump. Um, what are your thoughts? Would you get a pump like this? Let me know in the comments below. Gene Arnold, thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video.